Okay, good morning everyone. So today we're going to continue with our electrostatics. So electrostatics, stationary or static electricity, deals with charge that does not flow. And we can contrast this with charge that does flow in an electrical circuit, for example. That's different. Electrostatics, stationary electricity. And we deal with two types of charges. So our positive charges, which cannot move, so protons, and negative charges, which are like electrons, they can move. So only the negative charges can move, as you know. And static electricity is generated when electrons gather on a surface. Only electrons can move from one object to another. Now, just to recap, we will go over two new definitions today. Um, and then we're just going to go over, just want to remind you that an object acquires a negative charge by accepting electrons. So you become negative if you gain electrons. So think about it, electrons are negative stuff. If you gain electrons, you're going to become more negative. Think about it literally. Think about an electron as, as something you can like gather in your pockets. If you have more negative electrons in your pockets, you are going to be more negative. And you become positive or you acquire a positive charge by donating or losing electrons. So you take your negative stuff and you give it away. So now you have a shortage of electrons, so you are positive. And we know that electrons can be rubbed off from one material to the next. So if you charge a ruler or a perspex rod, you can use a cloth. If you rub it very fast, we can get the transfer of electrons from the rod to the cloth. Then the the, the rod becomes positively charged because it's lost electrons. The cloth becomes negatively charged because it's gained electrons. And there we go. It's the same thing. Another example. And then we know that unlike charges attract, so a positive and a negative will attract, and like charges will repel. Okay. So what I want to go over today is the following. We're going to go over the principle of conservation of charge, also called the law of the conservation of electric charge. Principle, law, whatever, it's used interchangeably in this situation. So basically what it is, it is the net charge of an isolated system remains constant during any physical process. So like two charges making contact and then separating. Okay, we're going to go over that now. So the net charge of an isolated system remains constant. That means that we can't lose charge, we cannot gain charge. It's only a transfer that happens. Okay, so I will recap this definition as we practice an example. And the second one is the principle of charge quantization. So all charges in the universe consist of an integer multiple of the charge on one electron. And this is the charge on one electron. Okay, so this is the charge on one electron. And what this um, definition means is that every single charge in the universe is either 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Remember, coulombs is a measurement for charge. Or it's a multiple of this, an integer multiple. So this multiplied by 2 or this multiplied by 3, or multiplied by 1 million. I hope that makes sense. So all charges in the universe consist of an integer multiple of the charge on one electron. So basically any charge that exists out there in the universe is either 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, or a multiple of this, an integer multiple. Okay, there we go. Those are the two, and now just to show you how I've summarized it. The two formulae that we're going to learn about in grade 10 electrostatics is charge conservation. So this is the principle of conservation of charge. So if you look at your textbook, it says the law of conservation of electric charge, the net charge of an isolated system remains constant during any physical process. So that's the same definition as I gave you on that sheet. So the net charge, let's just see what the sheet says quickly. The net charge, yeah, same thing. The net charge of an isolated system remains constant during any physical process. And I gave an example there, example two charges making contact and then separating. 
Okay, so I will illustrate that through obviously using the formula. So that is the law of conservation of charge. And we are going to look at this formula first, then later on we'll deal with charge quantization. So what this formula is, Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. What we use this formula for is if I have two objects, I have two objects, they are of separate charges, and I bring them into contact, and a transfer of electrons takes place, and I separate them again. Okay, so let me repeat. I have two charged objects. I bring them into contact. When I bring them into contact, there's a transfer of electrons. In other words, the electrons move from one of the objects to the other. And then I separate them, and they now have a new charge. I use this formula. So it says, calculate the charge on both objects after separation. So, what the things in the formula stand for, Q, which is this one, is the total charge on each object after contact. So this is the final charge, you can think of it. Let's write that in. Final charge. Okay. Then Q1 is the charge on object 1 before contact. And Q2 is the charge on object 2 before contact. So it's kind of like taking an average of the two charges. Because what happens is we have two objects with it's each of them have their own charge. They come into contact with one another. And there's a transfer of electrons. So basically the electrons try and balance out. They try and even out. Okay? So let me draw a picture. So I have a sphere here of two coulombs and I have a sphere here of let's say five coulombs. Okay? Now this one has its own charge. C stands for coulombs, it's a measurement of charges, you know. And this one's five coulombs. Okay, so which one is more negative? Which one is more negative? I know neither of these numbers are negative number, but which number is more negative? Which one is closer to the negative numbers? This one, it's smaller. Okay, so when these two charges, let's call it A and B, when these two objects come into contact, they're going to go like this, A, B, they come into contact. Then what happens is a flow of electrons, in other words, a flow of charge, basically, from one object to the next. And how the electrons flow, remember you're trying to balance out electrons, that's what's happening here. So it's going to flow from one object to the next. So technically this one is more negative. And this one is less negative. Or more positive, however you want to think of it. More positive. So this one's more positive or less negative, this one is more negative. And if you're more negative, it means that you have an excess of electrons, which means you have more electrons. So what happens in electrostatics is when there's two objects of different charges, when they come into contact, we want to balance out these electrons. So A and B are going to meet, and then B is going to say, hey, A, you have an excess of electrons, you have more than me. So share some with me so we can be the same. So electrons will be transferred from A to B. So from more negative objects to the less negative.
So you guys, you can think of it as they're kind of sharing their charge, okay? So basically, the electrons travel from A to B, and it evens out. They're sharing the electrons. And electrons are transferred. This is done until both objects have the exact same charge. Okay, let me write that for you. Okay, so as we said, electrons travel or trans are transferred rather from the more negative object A to the less negative object B. The reason they're doing this is because they want to transfer electrons until they are spread evenly between the objects. So they're essentially sharing the electrons evenly. And after they separate, because of this transfer, both will have the same charge. So they start as different, they touch, share electrons, now they have the same charge. And we know what happens when they have the same charge, right? They're going to repel. Okay, so already initially they both have the same charge, they're both positive. This is a positive 2 and this is a positive 5, so they'll have to touch by us pushing them together. Okay, so if I had to do this as an example, so using the calculation, Q equals Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. As you can see, I have two objects. So I have, you can call this QA and QB even, because my objects are A and B. Okay. So the charge of A plus the charge of B divided by 2 will give me the final charge. So A, we said, starts out with positive 2 coulombs and B starts out with positive 5 coulombs. So we put it in like this, 2 plus 5, and our signs go in here, but they're both positive, divided by 2. So Q, 2 plus 5 is 7, 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. Okay, so basically what happens is after they come into contact and they separate each object, so each object A and B now have a final charge of 3.50 coulombs each after they separate. So what has happened, electrons have moved from A to B, the more negative to the less negative, to spread out the electrons evenly. Then after they are separated again, they now have the exact same charge. And charge is measured in coulombs. Okay, let me do another example. So you take this down. It's good to take this down. I'm going to give you another one. I have object 1 and object 2, and I want you guys to answer the following questions quickly. Okay, you guys can try this. It's object 1 or sphere 1. Sphere 1, charge of 2 coulombs, positive 2. And sphere 2 has a charge of negative 6 coulombs. So you need to answer these two questions for me. How will the electrons be transferred in this case? Would it, will the electrons go from 1 to 2 or from 2 to 1? And tell me why. And then calculate object or sphere 1 and sphere 2's charge after they touch and are separated again. Okay, so you guys can pause the screen and try that now. And let's go over it. So how will the electrons be transferred from... Will they go from 1 to 2 or 2 to 1? So remember, it always goes from the more negative to the less negative because they want to spread the charges. So the one that is more negative wants to get rid of its extra charges, um, negative electrons, sorry, and give it to the less, um, the more positive one. Okay, so which one is more negative? Sphere 2. And so it goes from sphere 2 to sphere 1. So I'm going to go so from... Electrons will be transferred
from sphere 2 what am I writing? To sphere 1. Because So I'm saying that it's going from 2 to 1 because electrons are always moved or they're always transferred from the more negative object, which would be negative 6 to the less negative object. Okay, and then B calculates object 1 and 2's charge after they touch and are separated again. So I have Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. Now this is your formula. You need to write it first. Then we're going to substitute into our formula. So we're working out Q. So Q will be the charge after they separate, the final charge, essentially. This is the final charge. Okay, then Q1, the charge of object 1 is 2 coulombs, plus the charge on sphere 2 is negative Six. Now, it's important, you need to put in the signs, negative 6. So for this formula, putting in the signs is very important. So when you substitute in your values of your charges, you need to substitute in the signs with it. So in this case, we have a positive 2 and a negative 6. So the formula is Q1 plus Q2. So we've got Q1, which is 2, plus Q2, and Q2 is negative 6. So we got 2 plus minus um, 6, which is negative 4, divided by 2, which is negative 2 coulombs. So this means that the final charge on sphere 1 and sphere 2 is negative 2 coulombs after they touch. So just to repeat, the final charge on sphere 1 and sphere 2 is negative 2 coulombs. In other words, the charge on sphere 1 and sphere 2 after they touch is negative 2 coulomb. So basically, we know that sphere 1, you don't have to write all of this, but sphere 1, its initial charge was 2 coulombs, and its final was negative 2 coulombs. Sphere 2, its initial was negative 6 coulombs, and its final was negative 2 coulombs. Okay, now I just want to point out a few things here quickly. We said that the electrons were going to go from sphere 2 to sphere 1, because if you look at the, let me just cover this, if you look at the initial charges, sphere 2 had a more negative charge, and sphere 1 had a more positive charge, which meant that sphere 2 had an excess of electrons. Okay, so electrons were going to go from sphere 2 to sphere 1. So this one was going to become less negative. He's giving electrons away, so he's going to become less negative. And there we see his final charge is negative 2. It was negative 6, now it's negative 2. So he became less negative, or more positive. And the sphere 1... He was given electrons, remember, so he went from being more positive to more negative. I really hope that makes sense to you guys. And if you take a look at sphere 2, the change, the difference in charge here was 4 coulombs. Can you see? Went from negative 6 to negative 2. Okay, so it was a difference of 4 coulombs. And here it went from 2 to negative 2. Okay. Again, a difference of 4 coulombs. hope that makes sense to you guys. So, there's just one more thing for this formula that you need to know. And that is, this formula uses coulombs in it. So, 
I gave you the example. I said this is 2 coulombs, this is negative 6 coulombs. So when we substituted into the formula, we said we used 2 and 6. It gave us coulombs. We use coulombs, my answer's in coulombs. But sometimes you'll get your values given to you for charge in smaller units. So for example, you can get milli coulombs, micro coulombs, nano coulombs, and pico coulombs. So this is milli coulombs, this is micro. It's a funny like U-shaped thingy. This is nano, and this is pico. So milli coulombs, micro coulombs, nano coulombs, pico coulombs. These C's should actually be bigger. Should be just bigger. The C is always bigger. It's just how we write it. So milli coulombs, micro coulombs, nano coulombs, and pico coulombs, and we just need to remember to convert to coulombs. So how do I get milli coulombs to coulombs? Times ten to the negative three. How do I get micro coulombs to coulombs? Times ten to the negative six. How do I get nano coulombs to coulombs? Times ten to the negative nine. How do I get pico coulombs to coulombs? times 10 to the negative 12. So you need to convert to coulombs. You need to convert to coulombs. Okay, so we've been through everything on this side. Now we're going to just do two more examples. And in a separate video, I'm going to go over charge quantization. So charge conservation, Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. I'm just recapping. This is the final charge. Okay, so I wrote this here, although I did write it here as well. I know my video quality isn't always the best, so I'm just going to read it to you. Final charge of both objects after touching and separating. That's what Q is. Then Q1 is the initial charge on object 1. Q2 is the initial charge on object 2. And we divide it by 2. You can think of it as taking an average. So if we had to have a scenario where we had three charges come into contact, it would be Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 divided by 3. Okay. So we use this formula to calculate charge on both objects after touching and separating. I went through what those are. You substitute the signs in. So this formula needs signs, and it needs to be converted to coulombs. How do you do that? Depends on what it is. So if it's millicoulombs, microcoulombs, nanocoulombs, or picocoulombs, you need to convert them differently, and here's the conversions. And just a reminder, electrons are transferred from more negative to less negative objects. So let's do two more questions. Okay. So examples. Two charged objects with charges two charged objects with charges 2 microcoulombs and negative 3 microcoulombs touch each other and are then separated. Calculate the new charges on spheres A and B. Okay, so we have two spheres or two objects. We have sphere A and we have sphere B. They have different charges. They're going to come into contact and there's going to be a sharing of electrons. How will the electrons be shared or transferred? From where to where? From the more negative one to the less negative one? So it's going to go from B to A. Okay, it's going to go from B to A. Just trying to focus this nicely for you guys. It's going to go from B to A because it's negative 3 to 2. From B to A. Okay, so the thing that's different about this is it's micro coulombs. Micro coulombs. So we need to convert. So I'm just going to write you have A, B, A is 2 micro coulombs, and B is negative 3 micro coulombs. Okay, so firstly, this is Q1 
or QA, and this is Q2. But it's in microcoulombs, so I need to convert. And you need to go back to your table, which is going to have to be in your head. You're going to have to memorize this. To go from microcoulombs to coulombs, you times 10 to the negative 6. So we're going to go 2 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. That's Q1. Q2 is minus 3 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Okay, so convert. We need to convert. Then we can write down our formula. Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. Now remember, this Q is going to be the final charge of both after they separate. Q1 is this one. I suggest putting it in brackets, especially now that it has a times 10 to the negative something. Then it's, the formula says plus, And then Q2 is a negative. So we put it in brackets negative 3 times 10 to the negative 6, close brackets. Divide all of that by 2. Now when you put it in your calculator, make sure to use brackets. Okay, so we got 2 times 10 to the power of negative 6, close brackets, plus negative 3 times 10 to the power of negative 6. Then we divide by 2. We get Q is equal to negative 5 times 10 to the negative 7. Cap. Coulombs. Cap. Okay, I just checked it on my other calculator because my calculator is sometimes weird with this. But my other calculator gave me this answer. It's the same thing, guys. Look at your scientific notation. It's either negative 5 times 10 to the negative 7, or it's negative 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 6. It's just moving it back a, a decimal place. So it's the same answer. Okay, so remember, convert. Let's do number 2 quickly. Object A has a charge of 5 microcoulombs and touches a neutral object B. Calculate the charge on each object after contact. Also state where the electrons move from A to B or from B to A. Now this is an interesting one. So we have object A has a charge of 5 microcoulombs. Then we have object B, which is neutral. If you are neutral, neutral, you don't have a charge. Remember, if you are neutral, you do not have a positive charge, you do not have a negative charge, your positives and negatives are balanced, so your charge is zero, basically. Zero coulombs or zero microcoulombs or whatever. I'm just saying microcoulombs because that one's in microcoulombs. So before we do the calculation, where, which way will the electrons be transferred, do you think? Remember, electrons go from more negative to less negative. So electrons will be transferred from B to A. Because although B is, is 0, it's a neutral charge, that means it's more negative than 5. So it's going to go from B to A, more negative to less negative. Okay, then my formula, Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 divided by 2. So we've got 5 times 10 to the negative 6, because it's microcoulombs. plus 0, divided by 2. So it's essentially 5 times 10 to the power of negative 6, divided by 2, which gives me... Now it's not giving... You see, my calculator does weird things. Sometimes it gives them scientific notation, sometimes not. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 5. We can quickly convert that. We go so it's 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, which makes a lot of sense. <laughs> makes a lot of sense. We could have gotten there just by pure logic. 
if this one was neutral and that one had 5 times 10 to the negative 6, remember there has to be some sharing. So essentially it's just that divided by 2, so it's half, okay, so they each have that charge. Alright, um, that's it for this video. I hope that makes sense to you guys. I hope you're fine with that. In the next video, we're going to do the quantization of charge.